Bom dia, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. And for the newcomers, my name is Didi Taihutu, who is a little bit frustrated at the moment because he is denied access to the beach by the Portuguese government, which is really strange. Um, in today's video, of course, showing you some really cool Bitcoin charts and telling you what I think that is happening at the moment to the Bitcoin price. Also looking at the BAM BAM indicator and the profit that we made yesterday. And of course, talking about the blockchain news that I read this morning during my delicious cup of coffee. Well, I now witness people walking onto the beach. So I think it's still legal to go onto the beach. I don't know for sure. Hmm, let's see. But an adventure again, because I've never experienced people closing down on a beach. Morning guys, I just arrived at the beach here in Portugal, but I just realized they are closing down on the beaches. Like all the beaches are empty and they have signs everywhere at the beaches that you cannot go onto the beach. I don't understand why. I think it has to do with the COVID thing, the flu. So probably you can get the flu on the beaches and not in the center of town because the center of town is completely full with people here in uh, Lagos. They are walking around and there is also a guy on the beach. Two, three. Ah, oh, there are some people on the beach. So where do they access the beach? Because the beach is closed. I really can't understand these rules, guys. This is like... This is a thing that would like make me leave Portugal. If they are so stupid to close down a beach in winter, for what? I don't understand. Check it. It's, it's really closed. Check. They really closed down the beach. We'll go and see over there because there are people on the beach. I will go over there to check because there are people on the beach. Maybe I can go onto the beach as well. And this is normally not how I open the video, but I'm in shock. They closed down the beach. So let's first start, guys, with the Bitcoin TA part, the part where I bombed your really cool jars. Well, I walk on this beautiful beach again here in Portugal. Bam! First things first, because we saw this huge dip in Bitcoin while I crossed down this small cove over here, guys. First things first, we saw this huge dip in Bitcoin and everybody was asking himself, why did we see this dip? This dip could be caused by the miners because there is a miner pool, the F2 pool, that crashed the Bitcoin price by selling all their mined Bitcoins in a huge peak. You can see this on this chart. Bam! On this chart, you can see these red lines coming up. This is the sell-off. You can see a tremendous amount of Bitcoins flowing out of the mining pools onto exchanges. And you can see a lot of Bitcoin miners selling their Bitcoins. Because of these huge peaks in the outflow of Bitcoins into exchanges out of the Bitcoin mining pools, it is clear that they were selling the Bitcoins and that did crash the price, of course. Because if such an amount, such a huge amount of Bitcoins is being sold, then that will drop the price tremendously. But... On the other end, we had, of course, our big friend, Micah Saylor from MicroStrategy, just buying up all the dips, and he bought for more than $10 million worth of Bitcoin. So we bounced beautiful from 30K against to 33,500 US dollar where we are now. Of course, we don't know for sure if F2 pool, that was a minor pool, did this with a reason or why did they did it do it. It is a huge Chinese mining, mining pool. But the positive part is that we now can see that even these huge Bitcoin mining pools don't have that big of an influence anymore on the drop of the Bitcoin price because we still have all these billionaires and institutional companies that are buying up all the Bitcoin dips. Thanks, Michael, for buying every dip. Bam! Let's take a look now at the Bitcoin price, what exactly happened. Let's take a look at this four hour chart. This four hour chart will explain you exactly what happened to Bitcoin in that period. Bam! On this chart, guys, you can see that the Bitcoin price is moving in this huge flag. And yes, these green boxes, these are the lines of support. And we did find support around 30,000 US dollars, like you can see, multiple times now. 
So we moved from a pennant into a flag. And the top of this flag is around 35,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. And the bottom is this 30K support line. At the moment, we are around 33,500 US dollar. And we are moving inside this flag now towards the top line of this flag, which is around 35K. If we would touch that top line of 35K, I would become a little bit more bullish again, but I would also expect again a drop down towards 30K because that is exactly where this flag support line is. And this is what mostly happens onto these charts. We form these sort of, we form these sort of patterns like a flag pattern or like a bear flag or like a bull flag because that's mostly happening in the Bitcoin price. We can see these pattern forming or you can see one of these structures forming that will predict the outbreak of Bitcoin during a certain moment. So the outbreak of Bitcoin again upwards would be or downwards would be at the end of this bear flag. This end of the bear flag is on the end of this month, the beginning of February, where we would go now like up to 35, but down to 30, up to 34, down to 30, and then break out to the downside or to the upside and make a new structure again for Bitcoin, which could be, yes, still a retest to 25K, which I don't believe. I really believe that we stay about above 30K, but could also be a breakout again to 40K and then up to 50K, 60K, 70K and way higher. And then I will explain why in the next couple of minutes in this video. So keep watching because it's going to be very interesting. Bam! Before I go into details why I think we are going to go much higher, let's first take a look at the Bam Bam chart. This one, Bam. On this chart, you can see yesterday we only did two trades. We traded with 300 US dollar and with a leverage of 10. The first trade was a long. This long had a 48% profit, which brought a beautiful amount to 450 US dollar, around 450 US dollar. You might ask yourself, now Didi, why did you take this long? Because this long had not a triple confirmation and the Didi BAM indicator indicated that we were going up because of crossing this Y line. There was a huge spike in the volume. And, and yes, I need to admit, there was some sand and sea. So we were not in the green hill. So that was not a triple confirmation. But the volume spike made me take this trade because we also closed above this yellow stepping line. Yellow stepping line, Didi Bam Bam, and the volume is also a triple confirmation for me. And I just get a got a little bit bullish and that is why I took the trade, took a 48% profit, ended up in 464 US dollar. Beautiful trade. The news, by the way, was also very bullish at that moment because the news clip from Michael Saylor and many other things came out. So which made me even more believe that we were going to the upside and also trust this trade. Later that day, again around 6, 6.30, I think, we took another long. That long was a 40% long. This was a very clear trade because here you could clearly see that yes, the, for example, the traffic light, we had green, orange, red, the Didi Bam Bam indicator, we had a flag and we had a close above the yellow stepping line. So there was more than four confirmations telling us to take this long. It was a very easy and clear long, which brought us to 645 US dollar, which brought us to an end result of a profit of 350 US dollar just in two trades using the Didi Bam Bam indicator. While I again walked this amazing beach here in Lagos, Portugal. It's so beautiful, a Roman bridge on top of my head. Also, guys, when we look at the stock to flow model, we can see we are still on track. Check this style chart. Bam! Beautiful Saturday morning chart because it will make you zoom out. You can see we are completely on track when it comes to the stock to flow model. You can see this bluish area. We are moving inside with this line, with the price line, and we are going to go up to 100k per Bitcoin in the near future. At least that is what the stock to flow model is showing us and what we have been following the last couple of years. Yes, we are on track. We are exactly moving around that bluish line again, which would be an indication to me, again, yes, we would go up to the top of this blue line, which is around 100K. I have been telling you many times about the stock to flow model. And for me, the stock to flow model is still a model that is completely correct. So yes, I trust that this stock to flow model will be intact and we will see 100k this year and maybe even much higher because of a few weeks going up to 200k or 221k in the year 2021 on the 21st of December. So that would be a really cool coincidence if you would reach that price on that day, like I already said many times before. Bam! 
there were all the charts for this beautiful Saturday morning. Yes, it's getting dark because I'm walking that way. I need to walk backwards. But there was all the beautiful charts for the Saturday morning. Let's jump into the blockchain news part because I will talk to you there about the news that I read this morning during my delicious cup of coffee. Bam! I will first walk upside, upstairs guys, because maybe it's also beautiful to film a little bit over there so you have the view of the area, a little bit more like an eagle eye view how beautiful this beach and this area is here in Lagos Center I already told you guys that yes, MicroStrategy was buying the dip Why were they buying the dip? He gave a cool interview, six minute interview. I will see if I can add it to this video, the clip, because that one is explaining so beautiful why he was again buying the dip. Why MicroStrategy is adding Bitcoins to their portfolio every day, in and out. Because Michael Saylor completely understands what Bitcoin is about. It's not just a trading tool. It's not just a peer-to-peer -peer cash. It is way more than that. It's turning into the store of value of an asset class we have never experienced before. It's the first time in life that we experience this kind of asset that is the store of value that you can use as peer-to-peer -peer cash and all the other things as well. So that is why I will add this video clip, check this video clip of Michael Saylor explaining why he bought again $10 million worth of Bitcoin. Bam! So joining us now to discuss is MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor. Michael, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Um, so I am, I am curious uh, what you think, uh, not only about the pretty dramatic pullback we've seen in the price of Bitcoin since uh, that peak earlier this month, but also what you think about continuing to uh, add to your, to your pile, why doing so right now made sense. Well, you know, Bitcoin's, it's not volatile to investor with a one to four year time frame because it's boringly spectacular for the past decade. It's up 200% or more pretty much on average every year for 10 years running. It's volatile for traders, but traders like volatility. So they're getting the volatility they like. It's attracting a lot of capital in the asset class. Um, I think it's having a stellar year and 2021 is going to be really good for Bitcoin. Michael, it's Guy. Thanks for being here. You know, typically I would say you have to be a rocket scientist from MIT to understand this, but you happen to be exactly that. So I'm going to ask you this question. Um, you're basically, first of all, I admire your temerity. I admire your passion about this. I truly do. And obviously it's reflected in your stock price. But how do the employees of the company feel about this? Because this is a huge bet in a lot of ways on the future of your company. Well, you know, when Google and Facebook and Amazon and Apple came out and they launched their digital networks and when the Internet came along and it was a new digital network for information, people weren't quite sure if they should embrace them. But I think 30 years later, companies that know how to use the Internet and know how to work with Apple and, and Google and Facebook and social networks are, are the leading edge companies and they're winning. Our, our employees are pretty delighted that we're pioneers in, in commercializing and integrating with this digital monetary network because this is going to be the future. And so I'm not going to ask you to play, you know, stock market as we typically do. But what, what's your what's the best case scenario for the price of Bitcoin? Like, what are you looking for? What are you planning? Because I would imagine it, at some point this has to come up on the earnings call, which I believe is within a week or so from now. Well, look, I mean, Bitcoin's a digital monetary network and the asset itself is the technically superior asset. Uh, it's 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 uh, the ideal institutional safe haven asset. So what's the future? The future is it for to flip gold. It's going to replace gold. And then after it replaces gold, it's going to become the monetary index that replaces stock indexes like the S&P 500, the Dow, the bond indexes and the like, because people that want to store their money, they want a safe haven store of value over the next 10 to 30 years are going to be attracted to a digital asset that has no inflation in it. Yeah, and I think you yourself in the past have basically said that your P&L is a software company, your balance sheet is invested in, in Bitcoin, though. Um, that being said, the stock is moving. Whichever way Bitcoin goes on a daily basis, the stock is moving right along with it. It's almost become a stock market proxy uh, for crypto. How do you feel about that? 
Well, you know, corporations everywhere in the world that are cash rich, they're looking at their cash and they're saying cash is a liability. They have to find an asset that's going to appreciate faster than the rate of monetary expansion. So I think what's, what you're going to see this year is corporations are going to embrace Bitcoin either on their balance sheet like we have because it converts a liability into an asset or they're going to do what Square and PayPal and Grayscale have done and they're going to build Bitcoin into their products and services because you're talking about them all the time. Their stocks are going up. Grayscale's from $2 billion to $20 billion in assets under management in 12 months. There's a reason why they have differentiated their products and their services with a big tech monetary network that's exploding at 200% a year. I think it's going to continue for the decade. And, uh, you know, everybody with cash has that opportunity. So... <laughs> I think our employees are delighted, our shareholders are delighted, and, and I think you're going to see an avalanche of new companies uh, do the same thing, either on their balance sheet or on their P&L. Michael, again, I'm a huge admirer of what you guys and gals are doing there. So my next question would be, though, just to sort of, again, try to take the other side. What are concerns around regulation under the Biden administration uh, moving forward? You know, there's every indication that this incoming class of regulators are informed, they're thoughtful, they're progressive. They know how important digital assets are to the competitiveness of the financial industry, both in the United States and also to the progression across the world. I think that crypto assets and Bitcoin has had a little bit of regulatory ambiguity in it. Uh, regulatory clarity, and that is bringing it into parity with other assets that institutions hold, like stocks and bonds, that parity and clarity is going to be a great thing. It's going to cause an avalanche of money to flow from institutions and corporations into Bitcoin. They're, and so they're welcoming it, and, uh, and I welcome it. I think it's going to be a good thing for the industry. Yeah, and just along those lines, Michael, I realize you made headlines not that long ago for having an exchange on Twitter with Elon Musk around the topic of Bitcoin. Uh, and I also realize that you're probably not going to comment on what those conversations offline have looked like if they've actually taken place. Um, but you are now planning on a conference, Bitcoin for Corporations. What has um, the response from other companies been? What are you expecting in terms of this conference? We're going to have thousands of executives, officers, and directors and advisors of corporations coming together in the first week of February. They all want to figure out how to plug Bitcoin into their balance sheet or their P&L. We're going to publish our playbook, uh, all of our accounting guidance, our legal guidance, all the work we did over the course of months in order to get ready to do this as a publicly traded company. And we're going to open source it and make it available to everybody with the thought of saving each of them millions of dollars and weeks, if not months, in order to make this an easier transition. Who's um, going? It's going to be a great event. Who's going? <laughs> I can't tell you now, but you'll find out. You're welcome to come. Okay. <laughs> Michael Saylor, I may just take you up on that. Thank you. The most positive part I took out of the clip is that he is going to do an event in the first week of February and this event will be attended by CEOs all over the world. Huge CEOs of huge companies and he will give away his playbook, his secret on how he acquired Bitcoin, how we exchange all the reserve assets of his company into Bitcoin. And he is going to give away this knowledge for free. It took hours and hours, I think weeks and months to create this playbook. It took a lot of time and it cost him a lot of money to create all of this and he's going to give it away for free because he believes in the power of Bitcoin and he wants all these huge companies, his business friends, to protect their wealth. And they can protect their wealth by this very revolutionary and evolutionary asset called Bitcoin. And Michael, I completely understand this, like I said many times before, but now this video was very clear. And all his friends that will be attending this free event in the first week of February will understand it then as well. And believe me, they want to protect their capital. They want to protect all their assets. They want to protect the reserve capital of their companies. And they are going to do so by MicroStrategy's playbook on how to exchange it into Bitcoin. And that is how they are going to drive the Bitcoin price up even more higher because it means that we will even have less 
bitcoins available for the rest of the market and then you get supply and demand guys and when supply and demand works like it needs to work it can only drive up the price of bitcoin because there is only 21 million bitcoins available bam the most positive part of the dip guys is of course that the, when bitcoins go sideways after a dip then the alts can run up and that is exactly what we saw we saw the alts running up we saw a spike in dot of seven percent so a spike in link we went back to 22 us dollar in link bezos xtc also went up with 15 percent guys 15 percent all the way to three dollar 36 so yes when bitcoin goes sideways make sure you exchange a little bit of your bitcoins into these alts that will be exploding and that's very positive for your portfolio that is how you play the trading game i don't trade too much alts i just buy alts in the dip i hold them till they go to the top and then i sell them so i'm not trading them too much it's just a little bit spot trading but when it comes to trading i always trade bitcoin or ethereum using the bam bam indicator with a small leverage of 10 on bybit or dudex or prime xbt on prime xbt i mainly copy trade guys but copy trading is very easy when you don't have all the time to trade yourself dudex and bybit have great offers now for you guys bybit gives you a 600 deposit bonus dudex a 300 deposit bonus and prime xbt still a 50 percent deposit bonus if you decide to start trading using those exchanges by clicking the referral links down, down below this video so if you want to sign up to these exchanges click on the referral links down below the video if you already signed up to bybit for example using the link then please realize that you can still claim the 600 dollar bonus afterwards as well so yes you can claim the 600 dollar bonus if you sign up already earlier this week or this month or this year by using my referral link you can still claim a 600 dollar deposit bonus so go to buy a bit and claim that reward on the top of the menu when you click on rewards bam some other cool news i read this morning during my coffee is about coinbase coinbase it's not my favorite exchange because you know they have a lot of regulations kyc and even accused of working together with the uh, irs and everything so giving the information about your funds to the irs so that you need to pay taxes so not my favorite exchange but still i respect what they did for the community because they were one of the first and they supported bitcoin to the fullest from the beginning on and they of course made sure that there was a huge adoption in bitcoin because they simplified of how you could buy bitcoins at the beginning but again they evolved into a little bit too re much regulations and kyc stuff for me but still a very good company and that is what you see in the numbers because coinbase at the moment holds 90 billion dollar worth of assets 90 billion dollar worth of asset that is a shitload of assets and they have 43 million users 43 million users that's a huge amount of users and they in total wow there are dolphins in the sea guys check it's a lot of dolphins guys even there completely at the back you can see them jumping out of the sea i hope you can still see them guys yeah there was one jumping big one How beautiful. During making my video, some dolphins. I was lucky I'm up here because you wouldn't see them from the beach because they are not jumping high enough. But from on top here, you can see it. Uh, where were we? <laughs> I was like, the dolphins. Uh, we were at Coinbase because they had 43 million users and 50% of the 90 billion, of course, is handled by their custody service, which means they are huddling 50% of 90 billion in custody for people on their exchanges, in their wallets and everything. That's still a huge amount, 90 billion US dollar. Coinbase is one of the big players in this market. Bam! And we can talk a lot about a little bit smaller amounts as well. Then we talk about the family token. But the family token, again, a new all-time high. $30 cents now. And we have almost a market cap of 200,000 US dollars. At the end of this month, again, paying the rewards to the liquidity providers. I think it's around 40,000 family tokens I'm going to pay as a reward, which at the moment is 12,000 US dollar. I am giving as a reward to the liquidity providers. You can become a liquidity provider as well for February. Make sure you hold all bitcoins and ethereum in an equal amount in your wallet and you provide liquidity to the family token like this just check the discord server for more information it's not that difficult it's pretty easy and then the end of february you will be you will be receiving your rewards for providing liquidity again so 
if you want to know more, sign up to our Discord server because there we tell everything and you can find all the information about how to provide liquidity to the Bitcoin family. Bam! Hope you enjoyed Gokstein's media video yesterday about the Bitcoin family again. It's a cool video about us visiting a beautiful place and later that day we came back from dinner and the kids were doing beer pong with these episodes of Gokstein media. We are just trying to share a little bit of our lives without talking too much, much about Bitcoin, charts and blockchain. Just how we live, how we pay for things, what we do on boring things, how we do walks with our kids, how we do adventures with our kids. And yes, of course, at the moment it's not that easy because of all the lockdowns everywhere and we can't do really cool adventures, but we do our best to create nice episodes for you every Friday on Gokstein Media's channels. So please watch these episodes as well. We have launched the ninth episode yesterday. So that's a very cool episode. Check that one. If you want to see the other ones, you can see one, two, eight as well, of course. Yes, Didi, they can count, but count on it that they are full of insight information about our family, how we live, if you want to know more about that instead of talking about Bitcoin and the charts. So enjoy that video today as well. That was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, Video, give the video a thumbs up share with your friends and family subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and please leave a comment as I love to respond to your comments thanks for watching this one and hopefully see you tomorrow again tomorrow is Sunday tomorrow will be an ask me anything beach walk and talk if you want to join that one tomorrow live with some questions then please keep an eye on Twitter and other socials because I will post the link to the ask me anything beach walk and talk tomorrow morning mostly around 10 o'clock so see you tomorrow at the live and i'll see you monday again enjoy your weekend have a beautiful day bam